Hello my strange and charmed ones. Welcome back to my channel for another video. As you can see from the title of today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make dividers for my planner. And I'm actually going to be showing you guys three different ways that you can create dividers based on different materials or different styles that you're looking to achieve in your own planner. It really isn't that hard to make dividers. I get asked a lot how I do them. Um, and I have a variety of ways, which is why I'm going to show you guys three different ways in today's video. If you guys have not already seen, this is the new planner that I'm using. This is my Franklin Covey Macaroon Binder. I did do an overview of this planner, so I'll go ahead and link it down below if you missed it. Um, but yeah, I have this new planner. I think it has a little bit of a different look than all of my other planners. It's a little bit more sleek with the black and the pillowed effect um, and this little floral little button here in the front. So I want to create some some new dividers for this binder. So you're going to watch me as I try a couple of different varieties today and um, I'm also going to go ahead and make a full set of dividers that I've already kind of started making but I wanted to go ahead and stop and film this video so you guys can see exactly how I make my dividers because I know a lot of you guys have asked and I know my dividers tend to be a little bit more unique um, because I am able to personalize my dividers. So hopefully with these tips you're going to be able to create a personalized set of dividers for you. Okay, so in order to make your own custom dividers for your planner, there are a few different things that I recommend you have on hand. Not all of them are necessary, um, but a few of them will be very necessary. So let me walk you guys through what items are necessary first. So the first thing you need to have in order to make dividers um, are a set of dividers from your planner. Your planner may have come with them, they may not have come with them depending on where you bought them from, uh, but you will pretty much need a set of dividers to work from. Now you can kind of get around this a little bit, but I always recommend having a set of dividers to use as a outline for any new dividers that you're making. So I just have this set of dividers from a Kate Spade planner. Um, and I have those set aside here. The next thing you're going to need, obviously, is um, a variety of different papers or scrapbook papers or folders. Because I'm gonna show you guys how to make three different styles of dividers today, I actually have three different items set up. The first is a set of um, dividers that I pretty much have ready to go, um, but I need to sh I'm going to put these together for you guys today so you guys can see how to make them yourself. I also have a, um, a pack of Heidi Swap um, file folders. These are like kind of already small file folders so that they work really well with cutting them down for a personal size planner. Uh, but you could use any set of file folders that you want. And the final thing I have here is a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, this is actually a nice piece of thick cardstock that actually has like a metallic print on the front and that's just plain on the back. Um, so those are the three varieties I'm going to show you guys how to make today. I'm not going to be making full sets of them, but that should give you an idea. You're also going to need, obviously, a hole punch of some sort. I do have my open six hole punch that is adjustable. Um, so I've got it set on personal size because I am making personal size dividers today. But you could definitely use this exact same method to make a five or a pocket or mini whatever size planner or file effects you have. Other than that, just need a pencil or a pen, just something to help you trace your dividers, scissors, an X-Acto knife, and a cutting board. Um, now, some of these things are optional. Obviously, if you only have scissors, just use scissors. If you have an X-Acto knife and a cutting board, I tend to like that because I think it gives me a little bit more um, control over my cutting uh, around the dividers. But it's all up to what you actually have. Um, and then again, another optional item here is going to be a laminator. I do have this Purple Cows laminator that was very inexpensive. I received it for Christmas. And um, a laminator is a really great thing to have if you're someone who wants to do a lot of crafting. But if you do not have a laminator, there is another way for you to laminate your dividers if you're going the laminated divider route. And that is these Scotch single-sided self-seal laminating sheets. So I'm not gonna show you guys how to use these today. I'm going to be using the laminator when I make the dividers that are laminated today, but this is another option. I just wanted to show it to you guys. If you didn't have a laminator and you think that a laminator is something you really don't need, 
but you just have a few little projects you want to laminate, definitely go with these self-seal laminating sheets. They're very inexpensive and I'll put a link down in the description where you can buy those. Okay, so let's get started. The first example I want to give you guys is how you can use either a cardstock or a piece of scrapbook paper in order to make a divider. So like I said earlier, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to make an entire set um, of each variety. I just wanna give you guys an idea of how you can make your different dividers in different styles um, and whatever suits your needs and your price range and your budget or whatnot, whatever suits your style. Um, there are a number of different ways you can make dividers and I've made dividers all three of these ways before. Um, so I'm just gonna show you guys like an example for each. So the first one is this cardstock example I'm going to show you right now. Um, and because this is um, metallic almost on one side and then it actually has a plain paper on the back side, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the back side first. Now, whenever I make my dividers, um, I do try to be as conservative as possible with my paper. And this is obviously a piece of scrapbook paper that has been used. It was 12 by 12 and now it's, who knows, looks more like eight and a half by 11 at this point but I don't need very much of it for my little personal divider. So all I'm gonna do is line it up um, on this paper, on the back side, which is kind of the off side. Oops, now you know I realized I have to flip it because it's gonna go the other way. Keep that in mind, you guys, which direction your tabs are going um, for what's front and what's back on this while you're doing this because you wanna make sure that you're actually creating the right one you need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this, tracing the tab, of course, which is very important. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, I'll probably just go ahead and circle in where the tab, the holes are right now. Um, if you didn't have a six hole punch um, and you had just an individual hole punch, that would be a really good idea is to go in and trace in where your holes are actually gonna be punched while you're at this stage. Um, it's not so crucial for me because I'm using a six hole punch, but it is just a nice extra step just to keep you on a guide. So now that um, we have the shape of the divider marked off, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out. Now I'm just gonna use the scissor to cut out the tab just so I give a little bit more control. I find that I do better using scissors to cut out the tab section. Okay, so there is the divider. Now all we're going to do here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and six hole punch this. Okay, so I've just gone and I'm, I was actually, I kind of just eyeballed it, I was pretty close to the originals, but it doesn't really matter, like I said, because this is a six hole punch, so I know that I'm gonna get a good spacing um, on the divider either way. So at this point, um, you could actually use this as a divider because this paper is actually a little bit harder, or you could run it through the laminator. Um, you could even go ahead and use another piece of scrapbook paper and do the exact same thing and just paste it to the back of this so that you didn't have a white back. It's all up to you, um, but that is generally how I would cut out a divider if I was using scrapbook paper. So the next method I'm gonna show you guys is using a file folder. And like I said, I'm using these Heidi Swap little memory files because they're a really good size and I like the patterns. A good thing about using file folders for your divider is that you really don't have to feel like you need to laminate them, which is one of the benefits of using them. What's also good about them is that they're generally double-sided, so you don't have the issue like you did with this example that one side actually has a pattern and the other one is blank. So if you're someone who knows they want a double-sided divider and maybe you don't feel like laminating them or you don't think that's necessary, then using cardboard file folders is a really good idea. Now these ones are completely like cardboard or cardstock. Sometimes you can get laminators like the ones at Target that actually have that wax coating. Um, so yeah, either one of those is fine and generally speaking, they're all double-sided um, so that the back is just as attractive as the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I think I'll take this floral one, that's cute. So I will go ahead and pull this floral pattern and on the back it just has like this nice like goldenrod color that works with the front. So these already have tabs, um, but I tend to think that they're too large for my personal size planner. So again, all I'm gonna go ahead and do, and maybe I'll use the second tab in my file for this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take another tab 
And I think I want this pretty color, the pretty pattern to be in the front. So this is all up to you. It's all what you feel like doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up. And it looks like I am gonna have to line it up on all four sides. It doesn't have a flat edge necessarily for me to use. I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it. There we go. And then just like I did with the last example, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out with my X-Acto knife. Okay, so now that I've got most of this cut out with the X-Acto, I'm just gonna take my scissor again and cut out the shape of the divider tab. So there is the second divider. And so again with this, you know, it is made from like a nice heavy cardstock. You wouldn't have, you didn't have to laminate it if you didn't want to. Um, and obviously I'm not gonna be laminating it in this example. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and hole punch it. Again, just using my six hole punch, but if you did not have a six hole punch, you should probably use your original divider that you used as a guide and find out where the holes are and use your individual hole punch. So that is the second divider. You can see these are coming along really nicely. We've got divider one and divider two and they just kind of fit in together. Okay, so the final method of making a set of dividers that I'm gonna show you guys today is probably the most complicated but it's also the most customizable. And this is the method that I generally use, or at least it's what I use recently ever since I kind of worked out how to make dividers this way, this is how I've been making them. As you can see here, I actually have like the skeleton of a set of dividers that I'm actually working on. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct these for you guys so you can see how I made them and then we're gonna finish them up together. Okay, so here is the first divider in my series. And these were actually created using some graphics that I pulled off of a website. I believe these came from Rifle Paper Company. It was just um, a series of different cities and like important landmarks in the city. And I thought that they were very cute. So what I did was I pulled them off of their site um, and resized them down to be personal size page equivalent. Um, and then printed them out. So you can see that this is actually made up of th really three pieces. I've got a front piece here, a back piece here, which this is actually made from just a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, that's just a nice pattern. And then the final piece of this is the tab. Now, a lot of people have asked me about how I get my tabs to get this scrolly look. These are actually Martha Stewart divider tabs um, that are that scrolly sort of pattern. And all I've done with these is covered them on both sides with washi tape and then cut the washi tape to fit um, the actual tab. So what I go ahead and do to put these together is I literally have a front and a back that are just plain pieces of paper that are about the size of a you know personal size page. And then I stick on the tab that is covered in washi tape and then I put them together and I'll generally use something to hold the paper together, um, some sort of you know, page clip or something like that because my final step to, to actually put these together before I laminate them is to use something like my adhesive roll-on, which I should have showed you guys this in the beginning, but I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and put it on the bottom and keeping these lined up I just stick the front page to the back page. And you don't have to use a lot of this. Once I go ahead and laminate it, obviously this will be sealed very well. I just need something to keep the pages from moving so that they stay aligned as they go through the laminator. So because I'm actually using this set, um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up because all the rest of my dividers for this series are still in multiple pieces. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them into place so I can run them through the laminator. And I'm gonna go ahead and also turn my laminator on right now. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all of the dividers in this set um, all glued together or stuck together with the sticky glue and I just have to put them into laminating pouches and run them through my laminator.
Okay, so this is one pass through my laminator. And generally speaking, one pass is really all you need. But because these dividers are a little bit thicker because they're double-sided and they have the really thick Martha Stewart tab, I'm gonna go ahead and run this through a second time just so I know that when I cut them up, um, they are as secure as possible. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I do still see a little bit of air bubbles, so probably once I cut these out, I'll run them through the laminator again individually, um, but I don't wanna waste any more time. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second set in the laminator. Okay, so now this second page has gone through its second pass. Um, so I'm ready to go ahead and start cutting these out. Now, in order to cut these out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this easier for myself, and I'm gonna use my, my Fiskars paper trimmer. I'll leave a link down to this below if you guys are interested in it, because um, I know I do get a lot of questions about this. But it'll just make it a little easier for me to cut these out, um, and I'm gonna leave the laminator on in case I have any situations where I need to uh, go ahead and actually relaminate any of these individual dividers once they come through. Okay, and because I am laminating these, I just wanted to say, one, now that I have one of them done, um, I do like to leave a little bit of an edge so that they don't pop out, but I do try to get these edges as small as possible. So it's really just a judgment call and you'll kind of, I feel like you'll get better at this as you get more experience with using laminators and things like that. I will say that when I do use the self laminating sheets, these guys, you tend to be able to get very, very close to the edge um, and they still hold up very nicely. That's because these are just basically uh, contact sheets, contact paper sheets. And as long as you have a little bit um, of plastic contacting on each side, it pretty much holds up. It's not the same as this laminating where you're actually sort of melting the plastic together. Um, but usually just one more trip through the laminator does really well. Yeah, and that looks really good. It looks nice and sealed. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these. Okay, so now all of my dividers are done. I just have to go ahead and put them into order. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to figure out what order they went in. <laughs> this and this, okay, good. Great, perfect. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is punch them with my six hole punch. You guys have already seen me do this. Okay, so here are the final dividers. I'll just do a little flip through so you guys can see them. So these look perfect and I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them into my planner now. So excited. Okay, so if you guys have not seen my latest setup video, I did recently receive this very beautiful Franklin Covey planner in the mail. And when I say receive it, I, I paid for this. I didn't get it for free or anything. Um, but I did want to make it some new dividers. So I think that these, these sort of like cities of the world dividers are going to be perfect in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up and you guys will get another peek inside. If you guys didn't see, I also recently received this Target card from a dear friend of mine, Emma, who actually, she makes YouTube videos as well. I'm gonna go ahead and link her below um, because she has started making YouTube videos and I'm, I'm pretty proud of her for kind of getting over her, you know, fear of public speaking or hearing herself talk. Um, and so I'll link her down below if you guys wanna check out her videos. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and now just kind of disassemble my planner and put these in. Okay, so here are my new dividers. I think they look excellent inside of my planner. And I'm really excited because I haven't had new <laughs> dividers in a little while. 
And because there are six of them and I really only have five sections, I'm using the last one in the back um, pretty much as a page lifter to get to the back folder. So as you can see, they're double-sided as well, which looks great, I think. And I just think, I think it did a great job. Um, and I think that this is a really easy process relatively, just kind of a fun sort of project to do on your own um, to make your planner look more personalized and just more to your tastes. Okay, so that's it. That's all you have to do to create a set of dividers for yourself. And like I said in the video, it doesn't matter if you're using like a cardstock or file folders or actual like printed images or things that you've printed off of the computer. You can cut anything down um, and there is a process for, you know, laminating and putting together dividers that fit your own style. So really the sky is the limit for the way you can create your own dividers. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like the content that's available up on my YouTube channel, there is more where that came from. Make sure you're following me all over the internet and all over social media at Miss Trenchcoat. And of course, make sure to visit my blog, Strange and Charmed. I'll go ahead and leave all of my links down below in the description box so that you can follow me all over the web and keep up with all of the fun and creative things that I'm doing. Of course, leave me any questions down below in the comments. And if this video was helpful or if you'd like to see more DIYs, please go ahead and give this video a like and of course make sure you're subscribed for more awesome videos by me thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye